if you were to take action over and over again, repeatedly on a new uh, subject, what would you eventually develop? A habit. If you develop the habit of taking action, you become an action-oriented person. And you can start off with nothing going for you. You can start off with a limited education or you have good education, you start off with a new practice in a new town and everything else. But if you're an action-oriented person and you try this and you try that and you try this and you try that and you try something else and you learn to get feedback, there's nothing to stop you from being successful. Is all successful people are intensely action-oriented. Over the years, I began to study the subject of success. And I had one simple idea that came upon me in my late teens, and I think it was the most important idea that I've ever had. And it was simply this, that if you study successful people and you do what they do, you'll be more successful. And if you study unsuccessful people and you avoid doing what they do, then you will not be a failure. And then one of the things I've found that if you study success, you begin to internalize success principles. And if you practice proven success principles, and if you do what successful men and women have done throughout history, that you will be successful too. And it's such a remarkable discovery, but it has been worth a fortune to me. And what I want to talk to you about tonight is some of the principles that I've discovered in over 20 years of research. I serve as a consultant to over 200 corporations, and I have been a personal consultant to the presidents of $3 billion plus corporations. I have studied successful men and women. I have read biographies and autobiographies. I have looked at the characteristics and principles of them. I've studied philosophy and economics and religion and psychology and metaphysics. And I've come to 10 key qualities. Now there may be more and there may be less, but I find that each of these 10 qualities that successful men and women have starts with the letter C. And the interesting thing about these qualities is first of all, with them success is predictable and without them failure is predictable. That if you have these 10 qualities, there's nothing in the world that can stop you from being an outstanding success. And if you lack sometimes even one of these qualities, that can be enough, it can be the weak link in the chain that dooms one to a life of underachievement and failure. The second principle that I discovered with regard to these qualities is that they are all habit patterns of mind and that nobody starts off with them and that you can learn them and that you can develop them with practice. And the third thing that I found is that if you will practice these principles until they become habits, until they become automatic for you, then nothing can stop you. The first principle starts with the letter C. It says clarity. And clarity is the starting point of all success. It means clarity of thinking. It means thinking clearly, and it extends from thinking clearly to a series of other things. With regard to clarity, it means the ability to determine exactly what it is that you want to be, have, or do in life. And the more I study successful men and women, the more I find that every single one of them, the top 5%, are very clear about where it is they're going and what it is they want to accomplish. When I look at unsuccessful men and women, or men and women who seem to be unhappy and floundering, I find that almost invariably, they have a very, very limited sense of direction, sometimes no sense of direction at all. You see, we as human beings are goal-seeking organisms. We only function at our very best when we're working toward accomplishing something that is important to us. And in my estimation, 80 to 90 percent of all the unhappiness, hostility, violence, psychosomatic illness, alcoholism, drug addiction, and so on in our society is caused by people having no sense of direction. They don't know where they're going. As they say, if you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. Write your goals down on paper and write them down in the present tense as though you had already achieved them. I earn X number of dollars in 2019. I am a self-made millionaire by January 1st, 2025. I weigh X number of pounds. I live in a 5,000 square foot house with a separate bedroom for each one of my children. I, in other words, write it down as though it were already a fact and you're just reporting it. You're just reporting the fact. Your subconscious mind is marvelous, but what it does is it only thrives on goals that you pronounce in the now, in the present tense. And so you now have a, a dynamism. It's called a dynamism in your brain, where your brain knows that you're only earning this amount of money, but now you're saying, but I earn this amount of money. Your brain knows that you're not a millionaire, but now you're saying, I am a millionaire. And so your brain goes to work to close this gap between where you are and where you want to be. And your brain starts to work 24 hours a day. And it works and it gives you ideas. Each person here has a, a what is called the a superconscious mind. And this mind has been talked about for 5,000 years and some call it the, the oversoul and some people call it the God mind. Some people call it God, spirit, whatever it happens to be. But there's this incredible power in the universe 
that you can tap into. You could just reach into it by simply writing down a goal clearly on a piece of paper and then this mind goes to work 24 hours a day to bring it into your life. You all read the books about the law of attraction and so on. Well, the fact is that once you are clear on a goal and you write it down, not type it, but write it down, is you force this uh, energy field of uh, attraction and it starts to pull into your life everything that you need to make the goal clear. But if it's not in writing, not a darn thing happens. The second C is the C of competence. And the C of competence says it's very simple, is that you can only earn a lot of money if you're very good at what you do. I noticed that every single man or woman that I had studied who had achieved any kind of success in any field whatsoever had done it after they had made a commitment to becoming excellent in that field. And I began to look and I began to compare and I began to talk to people and I speak to thousands of people virtually every month. I found that I never found a single person who was successful, who was not excellent at what they did. That competence, the commitment to becoming excellent in your chosen field is an indispensable prerequisite for success, that if you are not good at what you do, you haven't got a chance in our competitive society unless you win the lottery. That success is predictable if you commit yourself to becoming excellent. It does a whole lot of other things within your mind, but if you commit yourself to becoming excellent, it changes everything about you. And only the top five or 10% are excellent. The third C is the C of concentration. The C of concentration is your ability to focus, which we've talked about before. It's your ability to focus single-mindedly on one thing at a time and to work on that one task until it's complete and to discipline yourself not to do anything else or to become distracted by emails and bells and bips and noises and things like that. It's just the, your ability to focus like a laser beam on a single task. And I think that the ability to focus and concentration are the two keys to success in life. That the ability to focus clearly and know exactly what it is you want to accomplish and the ability to concentrate single-mindedly on accomplishing that one thing without diversion or distraction are the keys to success. Successful people, peak performers, concentrate on the top items. And remember, anything other than working on the top items on your list is a waste of your time. And time management is not just time management. Time management is life management. You can do anything you want with your life if you'll manage your time properly. We all have the same 24 hours a day and the ability to concentrate, 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 to discipline yourself, to use willpower and perseverance to concentrate on one thing at a time is a quality of all success. Nothing great has ever been accomplished without the ability to concentrate single-mindedly on one thing at a time. The next C is common sense. Common sense, according to the Gallup organization that just did a wonderful book called The Great American Success Story, they surveyed 1,500 people in Marquis' Who's Who in America, 1,500 of the most respected men and women in America, and they asked them, what do you consider to be the most important single quality of success? And they agreed almost unanimously on common sense. You can train your mind to have common sense. You can train your mind to think things through before acting. In my experience, action without thinking is the cause of every failure. Action without thinking is the cause of every failure. And common sense comes from taking the time to think things through before you act. Listen to your intuition. Your intuition is one of the best guides that you possibly have. You know from some of the other work that we've done is that each person has inside them an intuitive sense which will always give you the exact right answer for you. Number five, C is creativity. Tap your creative potential. Accept the fact that every single human being is a genius and all successful men and women are creative. They're creative in that they respond to their world differently. They ask questions, they're flexible, they're curious. You know what the, the hallmark of creativity is curiosity. The hallmark of ignorance and stupidity is the cessation or stopping from asking questions. And I've worked with some of the brightest men and women in this nation and I find that the smartest people of all, the ones that have the greatest education and the most experience are the ones who ask the most questions. They ask questions almost as if they were children, but they never stop asking questions. They're very open and flexible, and they have the ability, once they learn a new piece of information, to drop what they're doing if the new information contradicts it and do something else. You know what most people do? Most people keep on doing what they're doing until they run into a wall. As they say, the more you do of what you're doing, the more you'll get of what you've got. Someone would point it out to me not long ago, and I think it's very true, is that all changes in our life come with the input of new information. 
that if we do not have new information, we keep on doing the same thing forever as a result of inertia. And creative people are always looking for faster, better, easier, cheaper, newer ways to do things. Remember, 80% of everything that we are doing today in our general business will be different five years from now. 80% of the products that we use, the food that we eat, the cars we drive, the music we listen to, the movies we go to, even the streets we drive on, 80% of everything will be new in five years. That's how rapidly things are changing. According to the research, all you need is an idea that's 10% new to start a fortune. Number six is continuous learning and development, is dedicate yourself to becoming better and better at what you do. It must be a part of your life. You must breathe in, breathe out, and learn new things. Self-made millionaires, self-made billionaires spend 60 to 90 minutes every day studying their field, reading new material. Warren Buffett was just relegated from number three to number four, richest man in the world, and Warren Buffett reads 500 pages a day. Warren Buffett reads five to eight hours a day. Warren Buffett reads eight hours, seven days a week. He reads all the time, and he's one of the richest men in the history of the world. And he and his partners all say the same thing, you've got to read. Read and learn all the time. So part of your life, don't, re don't ever listen to the radio. I say you should never even know if your radio works in your car because you never listen to it. The CDs that are available to help you become better are unbelievable. You can download them with Audible and put them onto your iPhone. You can listen to them in every part of your life and one idea can make you rich. So just keep flooding your mind with new ideas. The seventh C is consistency. Consistency is absolutely critical. You can have all of the others, but if you're inconsistent, it's going to really hurt you. Consistency means that dependable, steady, predictable work is always vastly superior to spurts or flashes of brilliance and genius. That the person who is like the tortoise, who just plods steadily away, old steady Eddie, is always the person who tends to be more successful than the one who flashes here and flashes there but cannot be counted on over the long term. Be consistent in your relationships, especially be consistent with your family, be consistent with your friends, be consistent with your boss, be consistent in your work. Make it so that you are the type of person that everybody can depend upon, that people will believe in and they'll depend upon and they know that if you say something, that you'll do it. That if you say you'll be somewhere or if you undertake a responsibility, that you will fulfill that responsibility. That sort of consistency, that sort of dependability is one of the most valuable things in the world of work today. I work with so many companies and I have staff that work in my companies and I know that the greatest joy that an employer can have is to give a person a job and know that it'll be done. And the most aggravating thing in the world is to give a person a job and have no idea if it'll be done, if it'll be done to a particular quality, if it'll be done on time or anything else. Just being the steady person. You don't have to be a genius. One of the things that I found, if I can pass this on to you, one of the things that I found when I was a young man, which this cost me about 10 years of life, by the way. But 10 years in that, I thought that you had to have good grades in school in order to be successful. And then later I thought that you had to have a university education in order to be successful. And then later I thought that successful people are people who are somehow better than you and I. They somehow have unique talents, that somehow the gods have descended from Olympus and touched them on the heads. But one of the things that I found is that nobody is better than you or I. When you see men or women accomplishing great things, they're not better than you or I, they're not different from you or I, they're just doing things in a different way. You look at a person you went to school with who's now doing surgery as a doctor. The person's the same person, except that they've learned how to do surgery. You look at a person who you went to school with who is now an outstanding success in a particular field, all they've done is learned how to be a success in that field. And consistency. There's a, there's a law of accumulation in the universe, if I can pass this on. A law of accumulation that says that even though you do a hundred things or a thousand things that you don't see, eventually they accumulate and they gather a force of their own. That every single great accomplishment in life is the result of thousands of minor accomplishments that nobody ever sees. The next C is commitment. I have found that the ability or the willingness to make a complete commitment to a job a commitment to a relationship, a commitment to a profession. To make a commitment is one of the hardest things that human beings do. That very few people make commitments. That most people in this room, I hate to say it, most people in this room are not totally committed to their work. Oh yeah, they're doing it, uh, they're in it, they're doing a reasonably good job, nobody's fired them yet, right? But they're not committed, their whole heart isn't into it. And yet no success is possible without commitment. Emerson said that every great achievement is the triumph of enthusiasm that the ability to commit yourself enthusiastically, wholeheartedly, 100% to what you want to do is the starting point of all achievement, that if you cannot commit yourself wholeheartedly, it probably means that it's not right for you. 
and that all of us in life seek for something that we can commit ourselves to. Alan Cox in his book, The Achievers, which came out last year, found that the executives in the corporations that he studied who achieved the very most in the shortest period of time had found the proper niche for themselves and had lost themselves in their work. Dr. Shrelly Blotnick's study of self-made millionaires. 83 out of 1,500 people became self-made millionaires over 20 years. He found that the one quality that they all had in common was that they picked work that they loved, they specialized in that work, they became very good in it, and they eventually became paid very well for it, and then they held on to the money. I throw that last one in because I know a lot of you can relate to that. They held on to the money. They didn't gamble or speculate. They were very conservative with their money. They got paid more and more, and they held on to it. One of them started off cleaning toilets on the night shift for an airline. And today he's the president of the airline and makes $1,950,000 a year. Now he's been with the airline for 35 years, but it's not easy to be, not difficult to become a millionaire when you're making $1,950,000 a year. Even with taxes, you can still do pretty well. He found that the quality that separated these people from the ones who struggled for 20 years and weren't much further ahead than when they started was that they became totally absorbed in their work totally committed to their work. They lost themselves in their work and when they lifted up their head about the age of 43, 44, their accountant told them, by the way, you're worth over a million dollars now. Did you know that? Most of them became wealthy without even knowing it. And so it's important that you find the work that you can commit yourself to. It's important that you find the relationship you can commit yourself to. And if you are an employer and you have people working for you who are not committed to their work, these people are like rotten apples in a barrel. I have found that people who are not committed to their jobs are people who will always cause trouble within an organization. There's no success without commitment, without you putting your whole heart into what you're doing and putting your whole heart into what you're doing for a long time. But if you do, there is no limit on what you can accomplish. You get up in the morning and you make a decision that, by gum, I am going to succeed in this business no matter how long it takes, no matter how many hours a day. Courage is the outstanding quality of all leaders. Courage means that you have the ability, you have the willingness to confront your fears. Because what I found over the years is that Brave people, courageous people, are not people who are not afraid. They're simply people who master their fears. They're simply people who face their fears, confront their fears. And Mark Twain said it many years ago, he said, with regard to fear, he said, do the thing you fear, and the death of fear is certain. Now, fear and courage tend to be habits that if you are afraid and you give in to the fear and you back away, it becomes a habit to back away whenever you're afraid or unsure. If you're afraid and you force yourself to confront the fear, it becomes a habit to confront the fear whenever you find something that you're afraid of. And you'll find that most fears disappear when you confront them. And most fears, fears of failure, fears of rejection, fears of loss, fears of pain, fears of limitation, fears of the loss of a relationship, fears of ill health, most of these fears disappear when you confront them head on. It's almost like as you push them, they just turn into smoke. And courage Winston Churchill said, courage is rightly considered the foremost of the virtues, for upon it all others depend. And in courage, what you have is two parts. The first part of courage is the courage to begin, to launch, to take a chance, to face failure and rejection, to try something with a very great possibility that you will fail and you'll feel embarrassed and upset and your self-esteem will go down and so on. But the second part of courage is persistence. It's the power to keep going and keep pushing yourself and driving yourself. And I had a tra transformation many years ago, which I will give to you. A woman that I was going out with before I was married, she asked me, Brian, she said, what is your best quality? And I thought about that. I said, I think my best quality is that I never give up. And that's your best quality. She's a very insightful woman. I still remember very intelligent. Your best quality, my best qualities, I never give up. And so I've spoken to audiences like you, and I have found that that's true, because I never give up. And my children never give up. It's, it is not in our vocabulary. We never think, we'll try something different, we'll try something new, we'll uh, take the losses and so on, but we'll never give up. So how do you develop this unshakable quality of persistence, which will guarantee your success in life? Nothing can stop you if you don't quit. If you don't quit, then the only alternative is you must succeed, and eventually you must succeed greatly. Great rule, you become what you think about, but you become what you say to yourself. So what you do is you say to yourself these magic words. You say, I never give up. 
Behave confidently, as Dorothea Brand wrote in 1935 in her wonderful book, Wake Up and Live. She said, the key to success is this. She said, go confidently in the direction of your dreams. Act as though it were impossible to fail. Go confidently in the direction of your dreams and act as though it were impossible to fail. And this brings us to the most important part, if I can just summarize in one minute, it is this, is that your true beliefs are only and always expressed in your actions. It is not what you say or what you intend that tells what you believe, but only what you do. Your actions are always the true measure. And the interesting thing that we've learned in behavioral psychology is this, that if you do not feel self-confident, courageous, consistent, like concentrating, clear, and so on, if you don't feel like it, and most of us start off not feeling like it, if you will act the part, if you will pretend as though you have the quality already, the feelings will generate the actions and the actions will generate the feelings. That if you will act, walk, talk, and live by the same principles and do the same things that successful men and women do, even if you doubt yourself in the initial stages, eventually you will come to the point where you actually feel to the bottom of your soul like a successful, positive, confident, cheerful, optimistic, unstoppable human being. And that's the key. Act the part until you feel the part.